It's time once again for that business show with Jamie Maloney on 1250 Wins WHNZ, where business becomes show business. Jamie is a leading Tampa Bay real estate agent and featured on the Wall Street Journal's list of top 100 real estate agents in the nation. Jamie invites you to list your home with him today and learn more at tampabayradio.com. Now, live in studio and promoting the entrepreneurial spirit that drives the American economy, your host, Jamie Maloney. And welcome back to That Business Show, Jamie Maloney, hour number two. Kicking off each workday morning now at 7 a.m. and going all the way up to 9 a.m. as the show has an excellent reach across the uh, Tampa Bay community to many different business owners now. And so I'm getting so many people wanting to come on to the program that we had to expand the two hours and yeah. doing a great job of doing it. And about, what are we now, six, seven weeks doing it two hours a morning, yep. Josh? Yep. And it's going really smooth. We were worried that we weren't going to be able to fill any content. And then nah, like, the first week was too. a little bit. Yeah, no, no. People are jumping in here pretty good now yeah. and uh, really helping lot, to build up cool the stuff uh, too. Yeah. And uh, helping to build up uh, not only the show, but also Tampa Bay business owners of which I partnered with. And so for all the business owners out there, uh, keep in mind, TBBO.org. It's a resource for uh, local business owners. Uh, good uh, way to uh, grow and collaborate with your fellow business owners. And uh, as a result of the success of the show, uh, Chris uh, Kremitzo, founder of the organization, brought me in and uh, working together and the synergy between us and the uh, and this program and his uh, organization really helping give a, a stronger voice uh, to the uh, Tampa Bay business owner. Learn more over at tbbo.org and also about this program over at tampabayradio.com and feel free as always to get in touch with me. Always looking for content for the program. People are welcome in here as a guest uh, one time uh, free of charge and we do have regular contributor plans available and if you join Tampa Bay business owners you get an annual appearance on the radio and probably get in here a couple times more on top of that is if I have some holes to fill the uh, membership of tampa bay business owners is where i go to look for first so again uh, head over to tampabayradio.com use the contact form to get in touch with me time to start our sixth installment of tech thursdays this is uh, brought to us by nick paris ceo of alpha computing solutions learn more about him and his services over at alphacomputing.com nick welcome back to the program today jamie thank you good morning so what do you got for us today some stuff on the android phone yeah um uh, google has uh, added a new feature uh, which allows when do they you, not add a new feature? I know they're they're, they're constantly doing, but this is actually a good one. Um, it, it, if you think about your phone as kind of an extension of your computer network at work, um, then sometimes if somebody loses a phone, that could really cause some problems. Mm -hmm. So what they've done is they've expanded the ability to find that phone, um, so you can log into your you know Google Chrome on your computer um, and go over to My Account and go over to Settings. And you'll see on there at the very bottom, there's a little button now that says find your phone. So what does it do? It rings it or something? Well, it can ring it. Um, it can uh, log you off of that. Um, it can also wipe it. Um, and it can also tell you the GPS location of it, assuming that you have your GPS locator turned on on your phone. But uh, I was actually playing with it the other day. And sure enough, I kind of left it in the other room and went in and went into the my account settings and found the found the button and said you know ring the phone and sure enough it rang the phone and wow that'll so. cut down on a lot of uh, kidnapping cases and stuff like that where people get taken and they have their phone on them they you know police can find them a lot that's yeah. brilliant right yeah, awesome. amazing to me the dumb right. criminals who don't know yeah. to turn their phones off <laughs> whenever right you know yeah, but uh, i'm sure you can go in there and for people that are you know concerned with privacy issues i'm sure you can go into the uh, the android and turn that off though for uh, for instance but still leave the phone on correct uh, it's it's yeah your phone's obviously got to be on and, and and for the gps to work your gps has to be turned but on. you can have the phone on and turn off the tracking information so uh, for people that value privacy I, I, be, I believe so but i'll be honest with you i i wouldn't do that i'd leave it on i mean because you just never know when you're going to lose your phone right and that's really the toughest part um i'm one of those types that doesn't like the gps following me all the way around so i i turn that off right um but and i tried that when i was when i was playing with it i said well okay you know, is it going to find my phone? It came back and it said your GPS locator is turned off, so yeah. it couldn't find it. So you can go to the your Google account page, and then you do you have to uh, register the phone uh, for the first time? No, how does how no? Does it because on an Android phone, you've actually done that already. In order to set up your Android phone, you had to create a Gmail account if you didn't have one, or tie it to a specific. Man, see how Gmail Google's account. getting us these days. I didn't even know, man. Yeah. I was absolutely, <laughs> so absolutely. They, they got me, man. I didn't even realize. I thought I was going to go there and register or something. Man. No, there in fact, when, when I clicked on uh, Find My Phone, the first thing it does, it comes up and it asks you which device. So if you have a multiple phones or an Android tablet and an Android phone, it asks you which one you're looking for. 
um, and then it it it, looked it, it amazes me sometimes when I go to sites and they they already know I've been there or they know they they know where I'm at and they know what I've searched for. It's just it's scary the the connectivity that we're getting today. You, you and Google are like uh, Newman and Seinfeld. It's like Google <laughs> Seinfeld. Well, but, the one the one that always throws me for a loop sometimes is if I'm looking for something and I've gone to like Amazon or a couple of other different places and I go back to Facebook. And then all of a sudden, there's an ad for the exact item that I was looking for. That's that kind of scary, that actually. Yeah, that, digital marketing yeah, 101. I've had me. that discussion yeah. here with digital <laughs> yeah. marketers. But yeah, That'll they, ruin relationships, I think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's almost like you're embarrassed to get uh, people your computers these days. You know, they're going to find out all your likes and dislikes and what you've been searching. I mean, everything's Pro tied wrestling. together these days through these accounts and right. everything. So, right. And for the person who's not a savvy uh, computer user, they may not realize mm-hmm. that, you know, if they leave their Google account open and they start typing in a website, it's going to pop up, you know, where you've been and everything right. so right. a lot of uh, relationships have probably been damaged <laughs> by that just Absolutely. like uh, what's this little black book uh, i don't know <laughs> it's just an ad i don't know what happened. does uh, what does about? this feature exist on the uh, ios uh, operating system yes it does apple's got a, a a similar feature on theirs um in fact uh one of the things that i heard was that if you went to like an iphone and tried to do that same thing like open open up and go to google chrome um, or go to the google website and try to do this that it actually the ios actually takes control and uses its own feature to try to find it and so it kind of really doesn't work if you try to do that from an iphone wow. um but if you do it from a windows pc or i think even a, a mac uh you know pc you should jamie's like windows. quit ripping my heart out man <laughs> <laughs> now obviously uh you know the millennials are becoming more and more uh you know part of the business culture and also technology just you know takes over our you know business life more and more every every single month here uh use, is your company using technology effectively understanding the generation gap what do businesses need to be aware of here well this is kind of a little bit more of an extension of uh, the last show because I think that was one of the things we talked about was you know how, how do businesses use effect you know um, uh, technology effectively and are they and and what do they need to understand and one of the first things I think uh, is that people tend to say okay well if you're an under 35 person you're going to understand and use technology better um, and while that may be the case because they've sort of now at this point kind of grown up with technology so they understand the interfaces they know how to use it and things like that the problem comes from a business perspective is that um, that person may not have the business savvy that uh, maybe somebody over 35 in their mid 40s or early 50s that they might have. Mm-hmm. And so just hiring based on the fact that they're under 35 and they may understand technology or how to use it a little bit better may be counterintuitive to making, you know, allowing your business to grow and so on and so forth. Because eventually the over 35 crowd will get the technology that you're trying to implement. It may just take them a little bit longer, but they will get it. I know I've spent considerable time, you know, in the last 10 years, you know, doing my own business, teaching myself technology. It's almost as if it would have been better had I hired a technology officer to deal with this stuff throughout the years. It would have saved me tremendous amounts of time. But you're right, you know, the older people don't understand the technology, and then you get people like me who want to understand everything, and we lose so much time messing around with this stuff. Yeah, but right. you save yourself so much money so some jobber can't come in and rip you off because you know what's going yeah, on it's debatable though because when you do one thing you trade off for something else so it comes down to what knowing your hourly rate yeah. you know if you know what you can make you know when you're doing your core product if you're spending your time you know filing papers you should be looking at somebody else to do that right right absolutely and, but it, it's a, it's a trade-off i mean you, you i think again you should have a what i was talking about last time a thirty thousand foot view of technology you should overall understand what it does but um you know certainly yeah there's some functions that are better suited for there's some amazing yeah. uh, technology i saw somebody the other day with a 360 camera have you seen these things yet nick where they're recording in 360 360? they're awesome yeah. yeah they're really cool that yeah. thing is pretty neat there yeah. i wonder they're, if they're isn't that a google thing though didn't Google kind of like bring that about with the Street View and all of that? I think so, yeah. yeah. And then Google, we've had a, you know, a Google photographer in here before who was going yeah. inside the buildings now. Google he is, drove the car, right? No, he didn't. No, he wasn't the one driving the car. He's going inside buildings oh, and photographing right, yeah. the buildings. And so now we're going to have Google Street View. We're going to have Google Building it's View. I think, it's, I think it's probably already out there, but he's one of the guys going around and taking pictures of the inside of buildings and then Google pieces them together. A lot of movies are using that for um, marketing, too, because uh, the, the Deadpool movie, when it came out there was an app on facebook where you you 
you know, like you scroll around the page, you just run your mouse on it and it does a 360 view of the room and like little dead poles are popping up all over the place. It's mm-hmm. pretty neat. Yeah. Now, now, Nick, uh, obviously it's important for a leader to understand how their company is using technology. I mean, it's one thing to hire a chief technology officer if you're a big company, right. but as small business owners, we would come to somebody like yourself. So tell us a little bit about how you can benefit a small business owner through Alpha Computing Solutions. Well, one of the things that we do is we sit down with the business owner and say, you know, w- what is it that your business is trying to accomplish? And how can technology get you from where you are now to where you want to be? And the unfortunate truth today is that technology plays a huge role in any business. I mean, mm-hmm. it's very difficult for any business to get by without you know, some type of technology. And so, again, I think from the business owner's perspective, they need to have sort of a game plan. Um, at least if they're going to do it themselves, they need to have a game plan of how am I going to move forward and what's technology going to do to get me from point A to point B. Do you find that most business owners are kind of clueless when they come to you, or do you, you must see a difference between the younger and the older generation business, business owner? There is a difference definitely between the younger and the older. Um, and again, it depends on how long that business has been around. Um, you know, if, if it's a brand new startup, then yeah, they're, they're kind of still feeling where they want to go. Um, older companies, you know, older business owners say, you know, this is what I want to do. Get me there. Mm -hmm. And that's sometimes a little bit easier because, you know, you you now say, okay, well, what's your budget? And how many employees do you have, and how do we get there? And, yeah, and then it's just a matter of coming. I just wish these plan. programs and these operating systems would just get to the point to where it's stable. It's just like every year, every month, there's a you know an advancement, advancement. They're getting faster, they're getting more efficient. It's just like, are we ever going to come to a point in technology where everything's kind of stable and it's kind of like what it was ten years ago is the way it is today? Well, uh, you know that's that's a good question. Part of it is competition. So because there's constant competition out there, everybody's trying to do better. Um, plus it's, everybody's chasing the almighty dollar that, you know, they're trying to say, Hey, you know, here's an upgrade, here's the fee for it. And so it what's gives that, them a what's that stream. technology law out there that says, uh, um, the processing speed will double every five every years. Five years. It's, it's actually down now to like two and a half to three. But is it, but it's been going on since like the seventies. Oh, it's, it's held true, but yeah. we're starting to finally see a slowdown in the ability to process uh, speeds. No, no, no. We've actually seen it increase. Oh, it's so increasing. Yeah. So what it's doing is instead of doubling every five years, now it's doubling every two and a half to three years. And there's no sight that this is going to still be a slowing down. Well, no. Wow. Well, and, and, and in fact, it's, it's, it's kind of interesting. I, I, I was reading a, an article the other day um, that talked about ENIAC, which was kind of the first computer out there that built in the U.S., and it took up just a, a humongous uh, floor of a building. Mm-hmm. And um, some uh, students, I believe at MIT, took all the computing power from that thing, and they put it on one chip, and the chip was about uh, you know three quarters of an inch square wow so we took what was a, a huge room and put it down into you know something that and computers small. are still processing everything with the ones and the zeros right it's all uh, i sort of heard somebody say one time on a discussion about technology that a computer today is still just one big adding machine it's just Absolutely. processing all the ones and zeros Absolutely. Which, which is a segue to another discussion but it's like you know how does the human brain work in processing information if we could learn how the brain works but we're, you know, we're still using you know technology with ones and zeros and it's amazing how fast we've gotten them with all those ones and zeros right, out right, there right currently talking to nick paris ceo of alpha computing solutions you can give him a call 813-839-7671 extension 100 again 813-839-7671 extension 100 or visit alphacomputing.com for all of your it needs here in the tampa bay region you're listening to that business show jamie maloney where business becomes show business How many times have you said to yourself, I wish there was an app for that? Stop wishing and start making the world better. Turn your brilliant idea into a profitable business by using Popcorn Apps. Their affordable app design will help get your blue sky idea or proven business to the next level at a fraction of the cost of other developers. They will help you get through all the steps needed to make your thoughts become live. See them at popcornapps.com with a K in popcorn or call them at 727-415-6705 for your free consultation and pop your kernel of an idea into a million dollar business and a world changer starting today. Have you ever tried to buy a home for your family only to find out that you don't qualify for a mortgage loan? You thought that after 20 years as a customer of your bank, they would help you when you needed it the most, right? Unfortunately, the banks of today are not the banks of our parents and grandparents and our relationships with them just don't matter anymore. My name is Frank Cotto, and I'm the president of the Lincoln Lending Group. We all may need a bank, but we also need a Frank, and that's what I'm here to do for you today. Lincoln Lending Group will waive all of your lending fees, which include your mortgage, application fee, your underwriting fee, processing fees, and any bank points. Just call 813-MORTGAGE. 
You drop the E, and we'll drop the fee. Tampa Bay weather is a roof killer. That's why when getting your roof done, you want it done right. Hi, I'm Jamie Maloney of That Business Show. When considering a new roof or repair, talk to Westfall Roofing. They've been installing high-quality roofs in Tampa Bay for over 25 years. Get a free, no-obligation estimate by calling 855-99-ROOFING. That's 855-99-ROOFING. Find out what already 15,000 satisfied customers already know. Call now, 855-99-ROOFING. At Vane 911, we will help you feel great again. Do you have restless legs, night leg cramps, or ankle swelling? Restless legs, cramping, swelling, and tired heavy legs are often symptoms of hidden vein disease. You do not have to have visible bulging veins to have the symptoms of vein disease. The vein care specialists at Vein 911 are uniquely qualified to evaluate and treat your veins. Are you unhappy with your previous vein treatment? Vein 911 succeeds where others fail. Call Vein 911 today at 855-VEIN-911. That's 855-834-6911 to book your free consultation. Vein 911, we will help you feel great again. In an age when the good and the better vie for attention, it is the best that stands out. The best of Tampa Bay from Proudly, Florida is the love story for the city of Tampa. Celebrating success, sharing achievements, a tribute to enterprise and community spirit. Let Proudly, Florida showcase your business to your city, your nation, and the world. For more information, email info at proudlyflorida.com and be sure to visit proudlyflorida.com. Are you in need of new flooring or ready to tackle that home remodeling project? Then contact Jaeger & Company Incorporated, a family-owned, state-certified general contracting business with over 70 years of experience and the recipient of the Angie's List Super Service Award for the last eight years in multiple categories. Jaeger & Company comes to you with their shop-at-home flooring sales service and their hardwood flooring refinishing is the very best in the Bay. Kitchen and bath design featuring American-made, well-born cabinets and all work is done by employees, not subcontractors. Learn more at JaegerFlooring.com. If you've been following that business show on Facebook and Twitter, you may have noticed the quality of some of our images. That's because one of our sponsors is pro photographer Rick Taseda, a member of the Professional Photographers of America. You can view his extensive work by going to his website at RickTaseda.com or call him for an appointment to chat about your photography needs at 813-641-4757. That's 813 641 Four seven five seven. Rick Tosseda Visuals. Call him for your next event or project. From the RP Funding Traffic Network. Crash now clear on the southbound side of the Veterans Expressway near the airport. Traffic still slow though from Gun Highway to around just past Hillsborough Avenue, and we've got slow traffic on the eastbound side of the Courtney Campbell Causeway into Rocky Point. Southbound 275, slow between Fletcher Avenue and Sly. Southbound 75, slow from before Fletcher Avenue to around I-4. See traffic problems? Call the injury firm of Abrahamson and your Hillsborough traffic tip line, 866-545-9595. This report is brought to you by Lead Safe America. Do you live in a historic home? Are you renovating? Your children could be at risk of lead poisoning. It takes just a microscopic amount of lead dust to poison a child. Learn more at leadsafeamerica.org. Hot and humid today with a 30% chance of showers and thunderstorms, high 90. Tonight, partly cloudy and muggy, low 79. Tomorrow, a 30% rain chance, high 89. You're listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney on 1250 Winds WHNZ. Missed a show? Then head over to tampabayradio.com where all shows are available on demand. Once again, here's your host, Jamie Maloney. And we're back to the Tech Thursdays edition of That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. In studio with Nick Paris, CEO of Alpha Computing Solutions. Learn more, alphacomputing.com. Nick, uh, we've been talking, you know, the importance of technology inside and inside a company. What are some other things that leaders need to be aware of? Well, one of the other key factors is, uh, is how can a technology improve your process? Um, because ultimately, you know, basically your business is going through a process of doing something. It's either building something and distributing it, buying it, selling it, whatever. And so there's a process in there that you're, you're trying to accomplish. And so really technology it, it, nowadays is just vital to that process of doing whatever it is your business does. So it's very, very important that you, you go through and and sort of see, okay, what, what's the technology? How can it help? Um, and the other major area is customer service. You know, what can technology do to help you with your customer service? Because bottom line, every business needs customers. Mm -hmm. um, and if you, if you aren't handling your customers well, then 
somebody else will. And there's a movement to, you know, cloud-based computing. I know we've talked in the past about desktop and server virtualization, right. all these programs, Office 365, even Adobe now. Everything's in the cloud. And in the future, is this the future of technology for everything? Yes, I, I, I believe so. I think eventually we're going to get to a point where uh, because of the fact that that technology is out there, um, it really helps a, a business owner. Um, it, it can help them keep their costs down uh, because they don't have that upfront um, expenditure to kind of get started. So you're going to see that startups will really, uh, you know, take advantage of the ability to, to just jump up, jump up, start business, and get whatever they need right off. Have the you top. ever come across a business owner that just will not embrace technology? You're trying to tell them, hey, you need to, you know, have a backup device or something, you know, some of uh, one on one type of stuff. Absolutely, and those are those are the ones that uh, cause you the most grief. <laughs> uh, so why the, did they, why did they call you then? Though? That's what well, I because know. <laughs> you know, bottom line, they want to feel that something is being done. They got a virus they called you for, like yeah. <laughs> they, they say, you know, we we need to get this taken care of, and then it's like, well, you start looking around, you say, uh, yeah, but you know, there's, there's a lot of other systemic problems they're, that are not at on. all concerned with saving trees at all. They they, <laughs> yeah. they want everything paper, they want yep. everything in Manila folders. Yep, yep, absolutely. So how do you convince them, you know, to use technology, or what's the first step? And for somebody who has no, t you know, IT plan, I mean, what's the first step? Getting some type of backup, uh, offsite backup device. What's one on one? Well, yeah, that's probably the first place to start is to say, uh, you know, what what is it that we, we need to protect here? Um, you know, I, I unfortunately like to say, okay, imagine that something happened to your structure, your building. What would you do? And that typically starts the wheel spinning for a business owner. Um, you know, if they start looking around, they say, yeah, if we have a whole bunch of paper, you know, what would we do? Mm -hmm. how, how would we recreate it? Um, and so a lot of times it may start with just a simple scanning project where we scan all their stuff into some digital media. Is that one of the services that you offer? You actually come in and actually help people scan stuff? Well, we'll, right. we'll hire a temp and we'll just sit there with put a scanner. Put it all on and there. All and on get it all there. Up. And then it's yeah. all up in the cloud. Yeah. What if your computer crashes and you get a new computer? Is there any difficulty getting re-synced up with the cloud, though? No. It's just a matter of leaving it on, uh, kind of like you were talking about with your Windows 10. Just turn it on. I always hate and, oh, yeah. and let it, let getting it a new computer because even when I get a new computer, it takes me, me too. it takes me a day to like get everything the way I need it. I wish there was like, and you see these device or programs that are supposed to sync the computers perfectly. Those things never seem to work right. And they always fail. They don't. They don't work a hundred percent. No, they don't. They that don't. stuff never works for um, me. Microsoft me had a little program like that built in. So if you were moving from like 95 and up, and, and if you were moving, it actually tried to help you move your settings. But yeah, there was only something never that works. It Whatever they did with 10, remember that was my fear and why I didn't want to go to 10 because I thought it was going to destroy all my apps. Well, oh, after our last discussion, and you were like, dude, you need to do it because after a while you it's won't be able free. to. Yeah. yeah, it won't be free. So I went ahead and did it, and I, I literally I, I, I got it started. I left for about six hours, came mm -hmm. back, and it was perfect. There was Everything was exactly where it was supposed to be. So they're getting better with it. I mean, yeah. I didn't have a whole ton of apps, but I had a lot of video game add-ons mm -hmm. and i never even played yeah, video games, that's but. why when you're talking about the, the idea of desktop uh, virtualization right you know i'm be excited when that's you know commonplace and but yeah i'm still you know replacing a computer every a couple years and it takes me like a day or two to get everything just the way i like it yeah with the virtualization it, that doesn't happen mm -hmm. i mean if, if you're if your local thin client that you're using to get to your, your virtualized desktop goes you swap it out and your desktop is still there like like it was before another good discussion here on tech thursdays with uh, with uh, nick paris here ceo of alpha computing solutions nick as always appreciate you here filling us in on technology thank you very much jamie and again keep in mind we'll hear from him uh in uh every other thursday here on that business show with the uh, installments of tech thursdays in the meantime if you can use his services please visit alphacomputing.com or give him a call 813-839-7671 extension 100 again 813-839-7671 extension 100 he handles the it uh, for uh, my uh, office as well so does a great job very resourceful and uh, he'll be able to help you out for sure plus an all-around great guy and an all-around great guy Thank you. That always matters. <laughs> Thank too. you very much. Coming back from the break, we'll be talking with Kelly Ham, founder and principal consultant with Bill Meyer Ham Consulting on That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business.
Hi, I'm Kelly Ham from Dillmeyer Ham Consulting. Did you know that one of the biggest challenges that leaders face is getting their employees to be engaged, motivated, and producing amazing business results? At Dillmeyer Ham Consulting, we'll help you transform your workforce culture from one that might be underperforming, maybe mediocre, to achieving amazing business results. You see, we realize that your workforce culture is equally as important as your business plan and your business strategy. The two must be aligned in order for you to reach your desired business and financial goals. Hey, Carol. Um, hey, Jim. I just got this uh, this plan that could really help with our process here. Okay. Why don't you just have a seat and let's go over it. Let us help you transform your workforce culture by leveraging your most important assets, your people. I want to know what's going on in your organization. Let us help you transform your workforce culture. Let's have a conversation. And use the promo code 15RADIO. From the RP Funding Traffic Network. Very heavy traffic on the southbound side of the Veterans Expressway, anywhere from south of Hutchinson to around Hillsboro Avenue, and also southbound 275 jammed up between the Fletcher Avenue and Sly. Cratch and Pinellas Park being cleared now on eastbound Park Boulevard, approaching U.S. 19. And northbound 275 a bit slow between 54th Avenue North and Gandy. See traffic problems? Call the injury firm of Abrahamson Uteric. Hillsboro Traffic Tip Line 866 545 9595. This report is brought to you by Damp Rid. Damp Rid Moisture Absorber is the all-natural way to absorb excess moisture in closets, bathrooms, and basements so air is cleaner and drier, clothes smell fresher, and everyone can breathe easier. Damp Rid Moisture Absorber. Find a retailer near you at damprid.com. 1250 Winds Weather Center forecast. Another hot and humid day. Low 90s for the high. Sunshine with increasing clouds during the day and 30% chance of a few scattered showers and storms. Back down to 80 for the low. Upper 80s tomorrow, a little front starts to move in, 40% chance of rain. Then we'll see Saturday rainy, cloudy, mid-80s. Tonight at 8, NBA Finals basketball, uh, 8 o'clock pregame, 9 o'clock tip-off on Impact Radio, 1250 wins. You're listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney on 1250 Wins WHNZ. Missed a show? Then head over to tampabayradio.com where all shows are available on demand. Once again, here's your host, Jamie Maloney. And we're back to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney where business becomes show business each weekday morning. 7 to 9 here on Tampa Bay's 1250 Wins WHZ. Also, video stream available over on TampaBayRadio.com. Also, in partnership with the Tampa Bay Business Owners. So, if you'd like to learn more about how to become a part of an elite business society, head over to TBBO.org. A lot of different events going on each and every week. And we got a big social coming up on uh, July 21st at the T. Pepin Center. That's going to be Christmas in July. We still have some vendor booths available, but you'll uh, probably uh, not be able to get those much soon, or not for much longer. They are going pretty quickly they are uh, priced very well and they'll get you in front of 500 600 different people and again this is a, just a huge business social one of our signature events that is held each and every year and very excited to be part of it this year from an operational standpoint last year as a member i attended and had a, a blast and again looking forward to that that's going to be july 21st tickets are available for general attendees 29 dollars for non-members of tampa bay business owners 19 dollars for the membership head over to tbbo.org forward slash cij for that event tbbo.org forward slash cij and also i'd like to extend an invite to people out there for our next main event that's going to be going on july 6th at the center club from 5 to 7 30 tickets are available for non-members it is open free of charge to the membership but if you email me and you haven't been to a main event before and uh, mentioned the radio show i'll get you a ticket to attend uh, so you can kind of get a feel for the organization if you're uh, considering it as a resource for your business again send me a message jamie at tampabayradio.com time to bring in my next guest for the program and also a tampa bay business owner member kelly Hamm founder and principal consultant of Bill Meyer Ham Consulting. Learn more about her throughout the discussion, BillMeyerHam.com. Kelly, welcome back to the program today. Good morning. Good morning. So Jamie, what's, uh, what's, how's, uh, how's life been over the last couple weeks since yeah. you're last in? Yeah, I enjoy coming back here every couple weeks. It's been really good. Uh, it's, it's good, busy, you know. Um, a lot of people are talking a lot about workforce culture, yeah. and every time I hear that, my you know, my heart warms, you know. It's we actually just, got on that topic yesterday with uh, uh, some uh, a consultant uh, who was in yesterday that came up. So it's it's something you're right. More and more people are talking about. More and more people are talking about. I think that it was a little bit, um, it was very popular in the, the 90s, early 2000s. 
and then uh, late 90s, early 2000s, and then it's kind of gone dormant a little bit, and now it's everywhere. Everywhere I look, I talk to people, they're paying attention to their workforce culture. That, what what that. brought this back? Was there a catalyst for this? Is it just that you know, the market is driving this right now? Yeah, I think that people are realizing that they need to pay attention to their people a bit more and that it's more than just the, the financials. You know, In order to drive your financials, you've got to pay attention to your workforce culture. The people that you have in place, are they aligned to the right jobs, the right roles? Are they focused on the right priorities? And um, leaders are just, you know, I feel being much more in tune with that. Now, you come with a background of some 20 plus years in human resources, yeah. and then you step out of the corporate life uh, into the entrepreneurial life. What was your inspiration in doing this? You know, I just absolutely love working with people. I had great success uh, working with um, the IT organization within a Fortune 50 company, and I I just realized that I like making a difference. Um, it's funny because Nick, a good segue that Nick just, uh, your previous guest just mm -hmm. talked about was he's focused all on uh, process and technology. And if you look at an operating model, I focus on um, the people part of it. So if you look at people, process, and technology, all three of those components need to be in place for organizations to meet their goals. So my, my, your question was, uh, you know, what brought me there? I love talent optimization, and when I talk about talent, I, I, I mean employees, and I like to make sure that you know they're really aligned and in sync with what the business goals are, and that they're satisfied in their job. And that just doesn't mean showing up and you know being happy, being in a happy place. It's being engaged and delivering um, good quality results, being committed. How, how do you handle um, these employees if they aren't? Um you know what you would say is you know mm -hmm. ideal for that business yeah so what what i do is i go in and i work with um the leaders and the employees and i figure out well, okay what's what's getting in the way we begin to discover is there a breakdown um and if so what is that breakdown and i spend a lot of time talking to employees to say what would make this a better place for you you come in you go to work every day what what would make it better and you begin to you know kind of Peel back the onion and say, okay, well, they're not happy with maybe a process, or maybe they have an idea and no one's taken the time to ask them what their idea is. And the more you spend time with the employee base and, and just get to what's driving them, what motivates them, the more you can then, the leader can implement some of those solutions. Do you find that younger leaders are more receptive to investing in such as, uh, you know, workplace culture, you know, bringing in a consultant, uh, older, more rigid leaders are looking at, you know, the bottom line, you know, ways to eliminate, you know, costs and, and improve the bottom line. Is this a tougher sell to the older generational business leader versus the younger business leader? I don't think so. I think it's the, it's the same. What I'm finding with the traditional business leaders who have been there a bit longer is really working with them to have in, um, embrace a culture of uh, multi-generations. Mm -hmm. And that is helping them understand that this is just the millennials are just another generation, workforce generation coming through and uh, helping them understand that when they pay attention to how they think and operate and what is important to them, that the, um, the business is that much more successful. But I don't know that it's necessarily you know, um, an older or a traditional manager or leader versus a, a younger. Mm -hmm. um, certainly we know the entrepreneurials are listening to the, the Gary V's and things like that. They're right, right. being driven, you know, a little bit differently than maybe a traditional manager was. Now you said this topic was popular in the nineties for organizational and leaders 2000s. and then it kind of fell out of popularity and now yeah. it's back again. And, yeah. so, and it's something that probably a lot of leaders don't even consider. They just figure they come to work and people are what they are and things are the way that they are, but they can be changed. So how, what are some of the yeah. techniques that you use to change a workplace culture? So what I do is I go in and I sit down and have a conversation with the leaders and I say what's working well and the very first thing we do is is not talk about the people talk about the business model and talk about their financial results and if they're meeting their business goals or not and from that it leads to okay well what's getting in your way or if you are what could we do to help you even exceed your business and financial goals even more which brings us to the people component again people process technology and so uh, we then to begin to say, okay, how effective are your communications, as an example? Um, 
how frequently are you talking to your people? Um, do you have regular staff meetings? Do you have a good cadence for regular staff meetings? I mean, I was working with an organization a couple of weeks ago where there wasn't any format or there wasn't any um, method that they had in place for even holding a basic staff meeting. And I'm not suggesting over-engineering anything. In fact, I, I, I am completely against that. What I am in favor of is just having some cadence and structure. So something as simple as a staff meeting that employees are familiar with, they, they know what to expect, they know what to come with, things like that. Now you mentioned structure, setting up an organizational structure is so critical to a success of a business. What are some of the things that people need to be looking for in terms of organizational structure? Yeah, so Nick talked about the um, the technology infrastructure, you know, his structure and what people need to pay attention to. And so now if you take the same and apply it to the people, sometimes um, leaders forget, and this, this is existing organizations, they forget to really take a pulse check and look at their organizational structure. And that is, what are your goals? Well, let me explain what I do. I go in and I say, what are your goals? What are your strategies? Are you sure those are what they are? Certainly everything is flexible, but today this is what they are. Great. Before we even talk about people, we look at, well, what are the functional responsibilities and what is your operating model need to look like for you be able for you to be able to execute and achieve those um, organizational goals? And then walk them through a process to say, okay, like let's say we, someone was starting an ice cream store. Okay, Mr. Ice Cream Man, what is it that you need? Well, I need someone to, um, I, I need to be able to sell ice cream. Okay, so I need to find a building. Okay, so I need to um, make sure that there's, you know, a, a strong operation in place where we're creating the ice cream every day. I need people who are focused on customer service. I need quality control, all of those things. And so we begin to build out an organizational structure that, is a supportive of driving those business results. It's then that we come back, after we get through all of this planning, we come back and we say, okay, now let's look at the skills and competencies that you need. Again, putting the existing people to the side for a moment, what are the skills and competencies you need from your workforce to drive those results? And so we begin another process to say, okay, well, I need someone who is, you know, very technical. I need a mechanic. I need someone, you know, maintenance person. I need such and such. And then we go back and we say, okay, with your existing organization that you have in place right now, do you have the right people in the right roles? Do you have the right skills and competencies that we've just listed out um, to be able to deliver on these things? And that's why you say, you know, when was the last time that your company took a pulse check? Yeah. Because somebody may have done this, but through the years, the roles have gotten convoluted and you were hired for HR, but now you're, you know, unloading a truck or something. You right. know? <laughs> so, yeah. so these things need to be reset every so often and looked at. And this is where you come in. Yes. And what I do is for those existing um, uh, businesses that are strong or, or not even so strong, go in and say, okay, let's do that pulse check. Let's look at your organizational structure. I know that for the past five, 10 years, you've had this model. Is it still appropriate given, you know, dependencies, the market, the competition, your financial goals, your results, all, is this still appropriate? And we begin to do what we would do with a new business with an existing business and revisit the model. Now, you have an upcoming event on July 13th. This is a complimentary yes. free seminar. Tell the audience yep. about this. Yes. So we've run this a few times, and I'm, I'm really excited to offer it again to the Tampa Bay community or anyone who wants to drive up to Tampa. We welcome you. Uh, we, we talk, as you know, Jamie, I've talked a lot on the show about corporate culture and how important corporate culture is. And so the um, seminar is all about understanding the importance of corporate culture, why it's important to drive and achieve your business results, and giving people some strategies to begin to effectively implement some changes that need to happen. And this is a free seminar. It's called Five Steps to Ignite Your Workforce Culture, Proven to Increase Your Bottom Line. It's going to be going on July 13th, 830 to 1030 at the Center Club. And she has a Facebook page for this. We'll also put it up on the Tampa Bay Radio site as a upcoming event as well. So Thank to you. register for that, you can call her at 941 201 4650 again 941 
201-461-4650 or visit BillMeyerHam.com. Got to take a quick break here. Currently talking to Kelly Ham, founder and principal consultant of Bill Meyer Ham Consulting. And again, learn more, BillMeyerHam.com. You're listening to That Business Show, Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. Savvy business owners utilize technology to connect with customers, communicate among teams, and collaborate with partners. Even with advances in technology, you all know it's not infallible. Where do you turn when your technology starts working against you? Who do you depend on to keep your team productive? Don't wait until your technology fails you. Get ahead of the crisis and contact the professionals at Alpha Computing Solutions so they can show you how to keep your technology running smoothly. Visit them online at www.alphacomputing.com. Computing.com. Attention medical professionals. Have you heard the Tampa Bay will become the first certified wellness district in the country? Thanks to Jeff Fennick's revitalization of Channel Side, the Dr. Whisperer wants to streamline your efforts and preparation. So when you're ready to ignite your practice, use the Dr. Whisperer's public relations expertise to spread the word. Use the Dr. Whisperer to motivate your staff. And use the Dr. Whisperer to recruit and secure leaders within your practice. Call the Dr. Whisperer today at 727-420-2481 or visit the thedrwhisperer.com where they write you your prescription for success. Who doesn't have a smartphone these days? And of course, there's an app for everything. Well, almost everything. That's why the folks at Popcorn Apps started developing mobile applications. They saw people like you with genius ideas unable to make those thoughts a reality. They develop applications for tens of thousands of dollars less than you'll find anywhere else and will turn your idea into a reality in a matter of just a few months. Think you're not ready? Think again. They are your one-stop shop for mobile application development. See them at popcornapps.com with a K in popcorn or call them at 727-415-6705 for your free consultation and pop your kernel of an idea into a million-dollar business and a world changer starting today. What's up, business rock stars? Are you ready to bring out the CEO in you? Join Julianne Nichols, CEO of Focus on You Strategy, every other Friday on That Business Show. She'll be talking with other chief entrepreneurial officers about how they grew their businesses. Remember, you could join the conversation at Focus on You Strategies Focus Fridays Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash Focus Fridays. That's facebook.com slash groups slash Focus Fridays. Be the CEO of you. Teresa Turner is a certified public accountant and the founder of Tax Happens, a boutique style CPA firm providing small businesses and individuals with hands on personalized tax and accounting services. Although we would love to tell you how happy their clients are, we would like you to see for yourself. Tax Happens has 21 Google reviews and a 4.8 star Google rating, 17 Yelp reviews and a 5 star Yelp rating, 38 Facebook reviews and a 4.9 star Facebook rating. What sets Tax Happens apart is number one, upfront pricing, two, clear deadlines, three, personally available year round, and number four, a willingness to empower clients to do as much or as little as they desire. Visit TaxHappens.com for more information. Did you know the biggest challenge business leaders face today is creating an engaged and productive workforce culture? Bill Meyer Ham Consulting wants to help you solve this challenge. They will help you transform your workforce culture to produce amazing business results. Call Bill Meyer Ham Consulting at 941-201-4650 today or visit BillMeyerHam.com. That's BillMeyerHam.com. Have a conversation. I knew mom wanted to stay at home. It's the center of her family, her life. But helping mom stay in her home while managing mine was just too much. Honestly, it wasn't just about me. Mom didn't want me to be her caretaker. She wanted me to be her daughter. I felt so alone until I found out about Home Instead Senior Care. When we met the people at Home Instead, we just knew they were different. The experience was personal. And most importantly, for mom and me, I get to be her daughter again. Home Instead Senior Care. To us, it's personal. How many times have you said to yourself, I wish there was an app for that? Stop wishing and start making the world better. Turn your brilliant idea into a profitable business by using Popcorn Apps. Their affordable app design will help get your blue sky idea or proven business to the next level at a fraction of the cost of other developers. They will help you get through all the steps needed to make your thoughts become live. See them at popcornapps.com with a K in popcorn or call them at 727-415-6705 for your free consultation and pop your kernel of an idea into a million dollar business and a world changer starting today from the Bright House Networks Traffic Center. 
crash in Brandon on eastbound State Road 60, just east of Lakewood Drive, a lane or two blocked here. Some slow traffic on eastbound I-4 and westbound I-4 between the Summit Connector and 275. And we've got slow traffic on the northbound side of 275 from the Howard Franklin Bridge into West Shore and slow traffic on eastbound Almerton Road between US-19 and Roosevelt. See traffic problems? Call the injury firm of Abrahamson Urich Hillsboro Traffic Tip Line 866-545-9595. Hot and humid today with a 30% chance of showers and thunderstorms, high 90. Tonight, partly cloudy and muggy, low 79. Tomorrow, a 30% rain chance, high 89. You're listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney on 1250 Winds WHNZ. Missed a show? Then head over to tampabayradio.com where all shows are available on demand. Once again, here's your host, Jamie Maloney. And we're back to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney where business becomes show business. Weekday mornings, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. here on 1250 Wins WHNZ. Show's website, tampabayradio.com. All shows available on demand. You can also watch the live stream over there and see that I sell real estate. That's how I got on radio to begin with uh, over about three years ago on the Jamie Maloney Real Estate Show, where once a week I talked about real estate and it morphed into a five-day-a-week uh, business and entrepreneurship show, and it's morphed again six weeks ago to a, a two-hour-a-day program. So uh, it just keeps on growing and growing off a simple idea of talking about real estate but if i can help you uh, buying or selling real estate please consider me your resource again tampabayradio.com we have a home evaluation tool on the site put in the home's information and we can get you over evaluation typically within 24 to 48 business hours inventory is low and especially if you've got a home priced under two hundred thousand dollars there's good demand from buyers out there the home will go quickly given that it is priced well currently talking to kelly ham founder and principal consultant of bill meyer ham consulting learn more about her bill meyer ham.com or give her a call 941-201-4650 and help improve your workplace culture now kelly is there a certain niche client certain niche business that this you know that you work well with or is there does it need to be a certain number of employees and staff for this to come into play no it doesn't and so workforce culture is everyone has a workforce culture and i know we've talked about that and i'm so passionate about it um right now i am working um with my niche has been technology organizations because again keep going back to that people process technology um i love working with people like nick um uh, and others where they're focused on creating that infrastructure for technology and i get in and i say okay well how are we really going to drive your business goals and results through the people aspect. And so um, while I have other clients that are not technology, um, I'm really uh, 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 passionate about going in and working with the technology leaders Think, uh, you ever come into like uh, just a you know a two uh, two person based business like in a, a boss and the assistant they just can't, yes. can't see there you can more of a, like a counselor it would seem yeah. like a relationship counselor but do you come into those situations absolutely and so you know I am also a certified executive uh, business coach and so even with the small businesses there's a, a company in Connecticut that I work with where sometimes as you know a small business you are. Um, overwhelmed with all the different duties and tasks and so going in and working with the small businesses to say okay let's stop let's you know let's put the brake on for a moment and figure out what are your priorities and figure out some processes put some process in place that will help them execute on um, more efficiently and so just having that third party fourth party in you know depending on the size of the organization me coming in and working with them and one listening mm-hmm. that's so important what what are their needs and then helping them, you know, through a non-intimidating way, you know, not corporate speak, but just rolling up my sleeves and saying, how about if we tried this? Have you thought about that? And you would be surprised at the little things that, that small businesses um, can put in place to be more efficient and successful. Do you have difficulty getting over the hump whenever you come into a new organization, the leader that you know is listening to your suggestions and they say, oh, I've done that or that's not going to work. Do you get that pushback initially and how do you overcome that? Sometimes I do. Sometimes I do. And so I just, um, it's not necessarily overcoming. It's understanding what their needs are, you know, and what, uh, what solutions I can come up with or partner with them that is beneficial to them. So it's not necessarily a hump. It's just approaching things a little bit differently. I have a feeling that anyone that is resistant to you at all when it comes to this stuff is just never going to come around because you're so approachable mm-hmm. and, and yeah. nice to talk to. I mean, you, uh, I mean, what do you do with some of these tougher cases? Do you just throw your hands up and say, you know what, you're on your own, bro? 
Yeah, I don't do that. But what I do do is I realize, you know, I am committed to be in service to others. That is, this is why I'm, you ask what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I'm committed to serve others in a way where they're making a difference every day in the workplace. And um, there are um, sometimes leaders who just don't um, have an interest in exploring some of these things. Um, I suggest, I recommend, I show value to them if they would consider some um, alternative ways to the way they're doing things. And then at the end of the day, if they're if it's not for them, it, there, there's no hard feelings. Mm -hmm. It's just not for them, you know that. Um, and overall, this comes in and it improves the bottom line. You come in, you set up an organizational structure. Yep. You help them with workplace culture. You help right. them with the yeah. relationships, uh, and you can really unveil ex some problems. Extremely so. valuable. It's from what it sounds like. A lot of places could use this help. You know. Now, mm -hmm. do you come in and do like an, an initial intake where you go to each staff member, you talk with the leader, then you talk with the, the HR person or the you know the staff, just depending on how it's set up, and then take an initial assessment and that's then right. say, here are your findings right here. That's how this kind of works. That's right. And everyone is different. So, you know, while I have a, a model that I follow and I have services that I provide, um, and people can see that out on our website, um, it depends on um, what the needs are, what the leader is willing to um, invest in and and I don't mean monetarily invest in me it's it's investing in their organization um, uh, and it depends on how far they want to go what are their priorities this would be a good idea for a TV show I was just thinking except for instead of like the normal businesses yeah. we throw you in like tattoo shops and stuff <laughs> like that. you know I think tattoo shops could use you know Bill Meyer Ham <laughs> because you know they are about the people and we could figure out how they can be even more effective or in that culture. salon or something you know? what's Some, the somewhere where there's a lot of drama what's the time frame in a company that says maybe has you know 30 people on staff you know to turn to make some results turn it around and, and get some results and what's the time frame you need to invest well so um culture is a process so changing a culture is not as simple as just turning on a light switch but there are things that people can do um, that will have immediate impact and that is some things such as as i mentioned before a simple example thinking about the way they show up every day thinking about their leadership shadow thinking about that the way that they uh communicate with their employees asking their opinion, you know, giving the creative person the permission to be innovative and progressive in some new solutions. Good information and something a lot of people need to pay attention to. Workplace culture. Kelly Ham, founder and principal consultant. Bill Meyer Ham could definitely help you out with that. Thank Kelly, you. thank you again so much. I love being here. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. And take advantage of our upcoming events free of charge, July 13th, 830 to 1030 at the Center Club. And you can learn more about this, BillMeyerHam.com. And we'll also get that up on the homepage of Tampa Bay Radio here. And you can register for that over there as well. Also, thank you to uh, Nick Paris in the uh, first hour today or at the 8 o'clock hour. And also Brad Kugler and Dan Dow Collette. A great show today. Be sure to tune in tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business.